When I first got my hands on the Galaxy Z Fold 7, I posted a video where I talked about the first 14 settings that I absolutely have to change to make that device feel like home. In this video, we're going to be digging a little bit deeper and talking about 13 more advanced settings to try on your Z Fold 7. So the first one I want to show you is an application called Quick Cursor. Now, look, these devices are very, very large. That's kind of the point of them. And because of that, it can be hard to reach the tops of those screens. And there is a one-handed mode in the settings already, where if you swipe down on the bottom of the screen, everything sort of slides down into the corner to make things easier to reach. But I think Quick Cursor is actually better. All you got to do is go to the Google Play Store and install Quick Cursor One-Handed Mode. This is what you're looking for in the Play Store. Once you open it up, you're going to go through a quick setup process where we're going to do a couple of things. Very, very simple to, to do this, and you'll kind of see it as we go forward. Enable Accessibility. You're going to click on Installed Apps and then turn on Quick Cursor. Allow. And then we can just go back a couple of times until we are back in the application. A couple of little small settings that I like to change. If you go into settings and go to triggers portrait, you can see this sort of darker colored area. That's where this gesture is triggered. I like to lower it all the way down. And then basically what this app is doing is it's making it so that if you swipe in, in that region, you get this little cursor, which allows you to just tap on things that are at the top of the screen without having to actually reach up there to them. And if you bring the cursor all the way to the top, you can get your notifications or your quick settings really, really easily as well. They even have a long press gesture that you can actually customize to do different things. It's a great app and I use it literally all the time. Now that I'm used to it, I, I can't go without it. Now, while I do think that the Galaxy Z Fold 7's camera setup is quite good and it takes really nice photos and the built-in editing functions are very good, there is an application that you can find in the Galaxy Store that I think is worth getting. Go into your app drawer and look for Store and then in the Store, we're going to search for Enhance X, and this is the name of the app, Galaxy Enhance X. This is made by Samsung. Honestly, it should just be built into their gallery application, but it's not. But it does some really cool stuff. So in this application, I've opened up a photo of a bug. A, I think it's called a leaf-legged bug, if I'm not mistaken. It might be a nymph of a, or a, a baby uh, leaf-legged bug. And it's zoomed in quite far, and it's kind of low resolution. It's a little bit blurry because of how far zoomed in it is. And look at these suggestions that we have down here. So one thing that we can immediately do is we can increase the resolution by two times. So what it's going to do is just try to increase this resolution. Duh. So you can actually zoom in on this a little bit further. And it should be fairly good looking after it's done. You can see if we zoom in the before and after of this. It actually has cleared things up and it looks to me fairly significantly better. There's also this magic function which is just going to do like several different things to try and make the image look better and look cleaner. Once again, let's zoom in and see how big of a difference we can see. There is a very big difference now from the original to what we have here. And we can go ahead and save this and you have a much clearer, sharper, higher resolution image. And there are tons of different things that this application can actually do. Focus, shift, color, tone, there's fixes, and just tons of cool things that Enhance X can do. Definitely go download that one. With One UI 8, Samsung has actually added a new way to split screen multitask on this device. It's called 90-10 split, and it's very, very cool. What we're going to do is let's just open up the Google Play Store, and we'll do our little two-finger swipe in from the side. If you need to know how to do that one, check that earlier tips and tricks video. And we're going to open up, let's do YouTube. So this is the split screening that you're used to seeing. Just simple side by side. You can get to it by dragging an app up off of your taskbar or whatever it might be. But now what you can do is grab this handle in the middle and drag it to one side until you see it sort of change colors. And when you let go, now you have one app in essentially full screen. And then if you touch this other side, it will slide over and make that app now be essentially 
in full screen. You can just jump back and forth. And I know that that looks a little bit janky, but that's just the way that I'm capturing this. It does not look janky at all in real life. The animation is very, very clean and smooth. It's just the way that I'm capturing. Well, I don't know why I capture it this way. It lets me do it wireless and live, but it does have some animation weirdness sometimes. 90-10 split is absolutely awesome. Kind of in the same vein as the taskbar down here, which like I said, you can use to just drag another app up or into the middle to do a pop-up view. There's so many cool things that it can do. You also do have your little side panel, which comes in over here. You can see there's this kind of little light little thing over there that you can grab and drag it out. And I must admit, I do use drawing assist sometimes. I do use AI select sometimes, but I would love for this side panel to be more useful. And I found a way that you can do this. When you first bring the side panel out, there's a little settings cog down there at the bottom. And in here, you can add some different side panels that can be scrolled between. I love the clipboard one. If I bring this out and I swipe on that side panel, you can see just a list of everything that I have copied with my device. But if you do like a lot of hiking or something, turn on the tools. And then when you bring that out, you can swipe over to tools as well. And we need to access location data. So let's do that. There you go. And now you have a compass right there as well with my latitude and longitude that I'm going to have to blur out. The screen on this device is 2600 nits when at full brightness and that is very, very impressive. And maybe you wanna get all of that brightness out whenever you're actually watching video. If you go into your system settings and you scroll down to advanced features, you are looking for video brightness. Once in here, you can change over to bright and then toggle this on for the applications that you want to use it in. And what it does here, as you can see, temporarily increase the screen brightness and make colors more vibrant when you watch videos. Now that you have your videos playing nice and bright, potentially burning your retinas, maybe you want to improve your audio quality as well. Swipe down and get into your quick settings, long press on the volume slider, and you'll see options for Dolby Atmos. By default, it's off. Probably best option there, put it on auto. And then there is an equalizer as well that you can kind of play around with. Boost dialogue, maybe you're watching something on Netflix and the dialogue is just buried in the mix. That should help. And then loudness normalization can be very helpful as well. This next one is very cool. If you swipe down and go into your settings, we are looking for modes and routines, and it should be, I think I've already passed it. There it is, modes and routines. And we're gonna go into routines. You can see that I have three already set up and there are so many things you can do with this. I'll show you this one. Basically what you're doing is you're giving the device an if and then a then. So as you can see with mine, when my device is fully opened, two things happen. It switches to auto rotate being on, and it changes a couple of settings on my always on display. So it turns it on, it sets the wallpaper to show with the always on display, and then it sets it to auto. When the routine ends, which is any time that the device is not fully open, screen orientation returns to the status before it ran, which in my instance will be auto rotate turned off, and the always on display does the same, which is the way I have it set is on the cover display, all it shows is the clock to save a little bit of battery. But you can do so many things with this. I actually went on threads and asked for some suggestions on this as well, and I got so many really, really cool ideas for these routines. You can see several of them here that was sent to me by the last one woke. And then Dan Seifert also sent me a handful. He's got a bunch of things going. For some of us, this becomes something that like you really just can't do without. Play around with routines. There's so much you can do. You might have noticed during this video that I have different icons than what are typically on your device. And that is because I am using custom icons. And the way that I did this is by going into the store once again. This time we are searching for an application called Goodlock, which you should see popping up there. Give that an install, open it up. And once it's opened, you're going to look for a Goodlock module called Theme Park which you can see right there. You're gonna click on the little install button. And once it's installed, let's fire this thing up. And from here, you can do lots of cool things. But in this specific instance, we're talking about icons. So I'm gonna click on icon down here and you can see the one that I just now did. 
we'll make another one. Let's do create new. And I'm gonna click on icon pack and it's gonna show you all the icon packs that you have downloaded from the Google Play Store. Just go there and download one. I'm gonna click on Verticons and it's gonna load for a moment and it's gonna switch these to the Verticon icon packs. I'm gonna click on the little download key. We're gonna type in vert and I can click okay. It will save and it will now just be there with my other custom icon. I can click on this and apply it. And when I go home, there will be my Verticons, my new icon pack. Very, very simple, very easy to do, and it can really change the look of your device. Another cool thing you can do with your home screen is stackable widgets. You can see that I have a YouTube music widget here, but if I swipe across it, I also have an audible widget as well. The way that you do this is by long pressing on the widget and clicking on create stack. From there, any widget that is that same size will be an option. We'll just do chat GPT because why not? We'll see if, will the four by two work? I don't know if it will. Okay, so it just shrunk it down. And you can just scroll between these. If you wanna edit this, long press and edit the stack. You can add another one, or in this instance, I'm going to delete that one. But it just allows you to have more versatility without taking up more space. So today, my battery life is a little bit worse than usual because of how much content I have filmed with this device. And I've spent a lot of time out on cellular data, but typically my battery life has been pretty good. And one of the things I've done to make that happen is something called light processing mode. Once again, we're going into our settings and now we're gonna scroll down to battery. Nope, I take that back. We're gonna go into <laughs> device care. And if we scroll down in device care, Performance profile, you can see is set to light. Prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. Keep in mind, this doesn't apply to games. So when you play a game, it's gonna ramp up to the maximum processing power. But in general, I find that this setting has absolutely no effect on the smoothness and performance of this device at all, everything runs exactly the same for me. If you are processing, exporting video, it might be a little bit slower, you, but again, you're not gonna feel it. It is still an incredibly fast device, but it also gives me just a little bit more battery life to use. And I think that there's actually a couple more things we can look at in that same section. I'm wrong, I keep confusing what's in battery and what's in device care. Let's go back up to battery for real this time. I could have just done this the other way around and it would have been fine. We're looking for battery protection. So by default, it is set to basic. When your battery is charged to 100%, charging will stop until the level drops down to 95. But you can actually do more. So adaptive protection is very, very smart. So it stops charging at 80% when you're asleep and then it knows, hey, he normally unplugs or they normally unplug around 6.30 a.m. So once they get to the right time, they'll go from 80 to full then. And that should, over time, make your battery last longer. You can even go the extra mile and just make it set at 80% or 85 or 90. You can just say, hey, never go all the way to 100% because that last like 10% charge from like 90 to 100 does the most physical damage to your battery. So all of these things can help this device last longer. Still in settings, let's go to connections and make sure Wi-Fi calling is turned on. Assuming that your carrier supports it, I have Mint Mobile and it does, turn that on. And if you're in a house like mine that is old and it's two stories and signal is terrible in here, it might make your phone calls work a little bit better. For the last one, we're jumping into the battery section and we're scrolling down to look at an option called wireless power sharing. Now there is a quicker way to get to this if you go into your quick settings and you click that little pin and edit your quick setting buttons. It may be down here and you may need to long press and drag it up. You can see that I've placed mine right there. But basically what this is going to do is it allows you to wirelessly charge another device with this device. But the cool thing is since this is a foldable, with two screens, rather than having your device face down and unusable, when you turn this on and flip it over, what's gonna happen is when it detects that it is now wirelessly charging a device, it will wake up and allow you to use this cover display. So you don't have to choose between wirelessly charging in an emergency, your earbuds or your friend's phone or whatever it might be, 
and still being able to use your phone. So guys, there you go. If I counted correctly before I made this video, those are 13 more advanced tips and tricks to get the most out of your Galaxy Z Fold 7. If you have any tips that I have not mentioned in this video or the earlier video, there'll be a link in the description down below to that video. Please drop it in the comments down below to help everybody get more out of their phone. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.